For this last example, we're going to go ahead and edit the query we just built to actually be our user stories and test cases from a specific iteration. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll pop back into our editor. And we can see that I actually have my iteration path turned on here. And that iteration path is turned on by going to our column options and turning on the iteration path. And so what's important about this is this is going to allow us to make sure that our query is built correctly and we're seeing the correct results. So let's go ahead and build this user stories and test cases for a specific iteration. And as you might expect, you need a new clause. We're going to be looking for not the iteration ID, but instead the iteration path. You'll notice that with the iteration path, you get a drop down over here on the right. And we want our iteration one. All right. Now, at first glance, this might look exactly what we want. We may want the workatom type of type user story, as well as the workatom type of type test case. And we're saying that this or this, and we want them to have the iteration path of iteration one. So if we run this query, we're going to notice something a little weird. When we look in our iteration path, we notice that we're not just getting work items from iteration one, we're actually getting work items from iteration two, iteration three, from just the general backlog. And that's because what we want is we want to group these two statements. So we want it to say, um, we want to say, look, it's either going to be a user story or a test case. And for whichever one it is, we want to apply that it also has to be in iteration one. So if we're doing an or in a flat list query, uh, you're not getting the results you want. You may have to group some work items together or some certain uh, uh, properties that you're specifying together to get the correct results. And it's always good to use these column options and turn on the options so that you can see that you're getting the work items that you would expect to get. So let's go ahead and rerun this query, and we'll see that we're getting only our user stories or our test cases uh, from iteration one. So it's very helpful to learn how to do these properties, uh, how to change them, how to specify them correctly, because as I said, flat list queries are going to be what allow you to build charts. And let's go ahead and save this query, and we'll take a look at the chart we built previously, and we can see it's updated with our new results of that query. So if you are editing a flat list query and there is a chart built for it and somebody is using it on their dashboard, you may want to consider before editing that maybe building a new query for yourself um, or updating that query and letting these charts get updated as well.